Hello there, this is Malik and welcome to one of my little mini tutorials. Today I'm doing what a few of you have asked and yes, it's good fun. It's a TNT cannon. Yeah, I know there are tutorials out there to do it, but you know, might as well uh, give my little spin on things I suppose. Now, um, generally the whole idea is you, you use a little funny thing about TNT. If TNT is in running water, it will not destroy scenery. It will still cause damage and it will propel things through the air but it won't actually destroy scenery. So you utilize water in your cannon so that the TNT doesn't just blow everything to little bits. So uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, first you pick your direction because you're not going to be able to turn it around once you've made it. Now, I'm actually going to make this out of wool because I'm weird, I suppose. Basically. Just making sure that actually you can stick buttons to, to wall. And it looks like you can, which is good. And I'm going to leave a nice trail of redstone there. Lights up nicely. I'm just going to leave a little bit there with the button. That lights up nicely. This thing here is is the red destroyer. Um, I have forgotten one thing though. Hang on a second. Yes, yes, that's what I normally do. Yeah, normally I put a stone slab there. Now the reason for this, it just stops the water overflowing and it gives something to put your TNT on. Now, that there, oddly enough, is your cannon. <laughs> it's a little bit odd looking, but it's absolutely fine. Next step is I'm going to grab some wood to make a workbench, because I'm definitely going to need one of them. Now, I believe that TNT... I'll be honest with you, as I've never actually made TNT before. Here we go. I normally just kind of <coughs> cheat. <coughs> um, so there you go. You uh, basically do that. You do an, an X shape with your sulfur, and then you just put in the remaining four, you put some sand. So anyway, I've got my TNT. Now, you put TNT there, make sure you don't put it underneath there, because otherwise the water gets wiped out. Another TNT there, and then one on top of there. Okay, now that is your ticket to amusement. Now when you press this button, that's the first button, it will light up this redstone and activate these two TNTs. Now the moment they get activated, they kind of, they become loose blocks, they're not proper blocks, and the water will then flow underneath them. Um, and the moment the water flows underneath them, they then, when they explode, they will not destroy the cannon, in theory. Well, after you've given these a certain amount of time to start fizzing, at the last minute you press this button, which then lights this TNT, and that becomes loose. The explosion of these two will then propel the loose TNT over there toward these innocent trees. I mean, these evil, wicked trees, which deserve all the pain that they receive. And then, hey presto, you've got your cannon. Now... The timing is, is in, you, you could probably make a redstone circuit to get the timing right, but to be honest, there's not that much in it. You just kind of wait a fair amount of time. So, activate that. I'm going to wait, 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 wait. There we go. Whee. It's worth waiting quite a while. because otherwise you don't really end up, it'll like sort of explode in mid-air. Now you could probably make this wall here out of obsidian, and that would shield you from the explosion, but 
if you haven't got obsidian, and that's obviously a bit of a pain. Now what happens is if you actually do it too soon, so if I press that and then press that, you'll see what happens. Explodes in midair, which is pretty useless. So yeah, wait till the last minute. You can wait until the first two start to swell. Whoa. So here's the debris created by the cannon. Which is... yeah, it's alright. It's alright. Certainly killed a couple of trees there, at least. And that is the Red Destroyer. Or the Wool Cannon. Whatever you want to really call it. Simple as that, really. There's loads of variations, and like I say, you could rig up some clever redstone delay, so you press one button and it activates them in the right order, but uh, but yeah, to be honest, that pretty much works as is. So, uh, simple as that, really. Of course, the other question is, how do you get so much gunpowder that you can actually afford to use up three TNT for something that might miss first time? Well, I'll leave that up to you. So, until next time, bye for now. Hello, this is Malik, and welcome to another one of my little mini tutorials. Today I'm talking about dyes. Um, not dice, not not multiple people whose lives are ending, but I'm talking about, you know, ink, dyes, and making coloured wool, or, or coloured sheep, which is more effective. Um, most of it's pretty straightforward to figure out. Um, obviously your squid, of which I... Uh, I'd managed to find some in here and then murdered them. You can get your ink sacks from. Now you need ink sacks for black and various other colours that have blackness in them. Uh, you also need, and it's a really obvious one really, uh, you need flowers. Because you've got all these yellow and red flowers that pop about randomly. The yellow flower over here. Um, so yeah, you can get your, your yellow flowers. You've got your, uh, you've got your red flowers. Now, I had a go at leaves for making green, because um, apparently all the primary colours are available. But um, but no, no, that didn't work. So of course I thought, nah, cactus. And oddly enough, by sheer fluke, I happened to have some cacti on this little beach area. What a stroke of luck! And I'm bash some of these cactus. Right then. Any more red flowers. Ah, it's getting dark. Joy. Joy of joys. I could probably do with some torches. Eh. Okay. Now, basically, blue is, is actually really difficult to get hold of. Um, in order to make blue dye, you need to get this, get this lapis lazuli. Um, now, lapis lazuli is a relatively common um, gem in the real world, but in this world it's pretty rare, and it's, you've got to dig right the way down, and I haven't found any myself yet. You're not going to find it in a map that was generated before the update either. You, uh, you're you going to have to either go into unexplored areas or generate a new map to find it, because I'm pretty sure it doesn't populate already generated maps. So I'm going to have to, um, unfortunately, not produce anything blue. Hmm. So, anyway, let's put some of these torches down, because otherwise I am going to end up getting lost in the dark. Okay. Now the thing with dyes is they're really straightforward to build. You just chuck them into the workbench and uh, you can make the dyes. So that's really straightforward. Actually, I'm going to see, can you actually make them with here? Oh, actually, can you make them at all? Oh, I actually thought it was cactus. I actually really did think it was going to be cactus. Oh, what the hell? Shoo! A lot of you, shoo! Go! Stop! Stop it! Go! Oh, actually, no, I don't want to really kill you guys, do I? Does it work direct, I wonder? Yay! Death. There's another sheep there, because your general gist, it's much better to dye the sheep and then hit it for the wool, apparently, because then there's a chance that it will produce a lot more wool. There we go, so now I have some black wool. Right, let's get cracking. 
No. I got unlucky then, I think I only got one bit of wool from each sheep. But either way, um, what I need to do now is make a furnace. There we go. Now, with colours, your general gist is you mix them together. Now obviously I could use this directly on some wool. So for example, combine that, get some red wool. That's pretty straightforward. In the same way as I could get some yellow wool. Like I said before, your best bet though is die the sheep, hit the sheep, because there is a chance, like me, that you only get one wool back from the sheep anyway, but there's a chance you get up to three. So, on average, you, you're you going to be twice as, uh, twice as well off and get twice as much wool. Beaten up by a bloody sheep. I mean, admittedly, like, yes, yes, I hit you, but, you know, get over it. Now, I'm going to make myself some coloured sheep. But it, before that, I'm going to do the next thing, is mix these two colours. Yeah, look at that. So now I have a nice selection of colours. And I'm going to dye me some sheep. So, I've got some orange wool, I've got some lovely red wool, yellow wool, there we go. Nice wool. And hopefully, here we go, I now have cactus green. What a splendid, splendid colour. I expect next time I see a sheep I can colour the stupid thing. I mean, I actually quite appreciate the fact that there's so many sheep just clamouring to be coloured. But it would be nice if uh, that's not pushing me about. Now, green, I'm guessing, will mix with yellow, because that's a sort of similar colour in a way, isn't it? Guess not. I think the problem I've got is that I'm quite limited with the colours that I have. So what I need is a little bit of bone meal, I would say. Now, I've got it on peaceful, so I need to somehow with the power of magic, come up with some bone meal, to be honest, because I don't think I'm going to find any over there, am I? Stop pushing me! <sighs> right. You can generally pale up most things. Uh, so if I try cactus green with a bit of bone meal, now bone meal you get from the bones of skeletons. Skeletons drop bones and arrows now, so we can make a nice lime green dye, which is uh, always nice. And obviously we've got white dye, which kind of sets the sheep back to how they were. You should, with lapis lazuli, be able to create a sort of pale, a nice pale blue, which is nice. So I've pretty much got quite a few things. Um, I'm guessing you can mix all the things together with the primary colours. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous purple. Oh, nice cyan from there. I mean, really, the idea is you just mix it up, you know, just just start experimenting. I mean, I'm just clicking around. Um, can we have, like, a... Did I get pale green? Yeah, I did get pale green. Pale purple? No, hang on. Pale purple? No. Paler green? Pale orange? No. Pale red? Oh, pink. But then I'm going to... I've got some red wool, that's alright. Um, I don't know what other pale colours I could get, to be honest. That's quite a lot of different dyes now. So we've got yellow, red, orange... Um, you can make greys, I think. I'm sort of just winging it now. Darker greys? No, I'm sure you can make darker greys by mixing sort of greys with darker greys or something or other, I'm not sure. But yeah, experiment and you will pretty much get lots of colours. A lot of colours. Now hopefully, aha, we have some sheep that have recovered their wool. Yay. Now look, behold the magic tower of coloured wool. That is actually quite cool. <laughs> you know, for like a really stupid simple thing, that is actually quite cool. But like I say, yeah, you know, you get your uh, lapis lazuli off the uh, 
out of the ore in the ground, which uh, is bloody rare, I hear. And everything else, you just mix it all up. Cook your cactus for green, which wasn't too complicated. And yeah, you've pretty much got your set of dyes. It's not been a thoroughly organised tutorial, but I hope it's been of some use to you to get your uh, get your coloured stuff on the go. It'd probably make a really good carpet, actually. You could make a nice regal carpet out of red, just leading up to the to your home. Hmm. Yes. There's plenty of things I think you could do with that, or make giant pictures. I will leave it up to you. Um, until next time, bye for now.